Hey everybody, since uh, the RPG Maker forums have been really helpful to me so far, I figured, you know, one of the few things I know how to do is actually make uh, sprites. Um, so I figured one of the things I could do is to sort of pass on that knowledge just sort of a quick video tutorial of what I usually do whenever I make sprites. Now, I'm not saying they're great, but, you know, they're... They tend to get the job done. Um, so let's go ahead and make an icon first. So those are 25 by 25 in RPG Maker. Uh, make sure that you're set to transparency. Mine's set that way by default. And this is using GIMP, by the way. I'm using uh, GIMP for this. It's a free program. Very nice. Uh, you're going to go to your pencil tool. You're going to change your brush to pixel. And you're going to drag it down to 1. All right. Um, Let's see here. And one of the things I always like to do whenever I make an icon is if it's an, like an existing item, like if it's something that's you know, pretty well known, like a sword or something like that, then I try to Google image it just so I have a rough guide to go on and see what it looks like. I've done that already. I'm going to have it on my right monitor so I can look at it while I'm working. Um, okay. So another thing you want to do is switch over to your eraser and go to hard edge or else it's going to fade things out. Let me actually demonstrate that real quick. If I were to draw all this stuff, and I'm like, eh, I kind of want to get rid of one of these sides. And if I don't have hard edge on, see, so kind of fades it all out instead of actually erasing it. If we go to hard edge, there we go, much better. Okay. So if we want hard edge on. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay. Now, a lot of people just like to have a blank background. Um, you could do that if you want. I usually just draw directly on the background the outline of the item I'm going to want. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that. I'll just go ahead and draw the outline. And then I will uh, go ahead and pick this video up from there. Okay, one of the really quick suggestions I have whenever you're making uh, the outline or making your sprite is 25 by 25 is really not very big, so you kind of want to try and fill in as much of this, this real estate as you possibly can. I'm actually doing a pretty poor job of that with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually uh, going to just go ahead and leave it as it is, but just as for future reference, it's a good idea to try and use as much of this real estate as possible. Actually, let's make this a little bit longer just to prove that point. It's going to be a very long bladed sword. That's okay. We like swords with long blades. I don't like the way that looks. like a penis. Um, let's go ahead and hit the tip on that. There we go. Uh, see, usually whenever you're making sprites, you don't want that. You don't want uh, any sprite that intersects on two sides. Usually you just want sprites or pixels that intersect on uh, just the corners. Um, you know, one side is okay. It's kind of unavoidable, but if you notice, like, the density up at the, near the tip looks considerably different from the density of the rest of the of the sword because we have one pixel that is intersecting with other pixels on its two sides, and that usually looks a little funky. Um, but again, you know, I'm not trying to spend a whole lot of time on this. I'm just trying to get it done. All right. So uh, the next, you're going to want to make a new layer. Now, whenever you're making sprites, layers are your best friend. Uh, so new layer. Let's go colors. Now, um, this is where you're just going to put in your basic colors, whatever color you want your sword to be. Um, you can make, again, if you're ever in question, uh, make another layer. Like, layers are your best friend. You can never make too many. Um, well, I guess you could, but that being said, the more layers you have, usually the more versatility you have. Yeah, let's go ahead and leave that done. What other color should we make our hilt? Let's go on and make it... Sort of a dingyish yellow. If you already have a color in mind, what you can always do is uh, use the eyedropper tool. Um, but you'll probably have to bring over the other image. Like, say, for instance, here I'm using the sword image. Let me go ahead and copy it real quick. Let's just say I want, and I would like to have a layer called pasted layer anyway. Um, I'll go ahead and copy that on there. Obviously, it's very large. I will scale that down. Now, see, there's two ways to scale your image. One is an image, one is a layer. Uh, we'll get to the image and layer later. So, let's go ahead and change this to percent. I'll make you 10%. It's going to look like crap. 
Yeah, it's just going to look like it. But I still like that color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the pasted layer is selected. Click O, or it's this over here, the eyedropper tool, or color picker tool, I guess they call. And, you know, I like this color. Let's go ahead and go with that. So I can either just delete this layer, or right-click delete the entire layer, or if I want to hang on to it for later, I just go ahead and click the I, and then it gets rid of it. So, switch back over to our pencil tool, which is in. Um, you can move around with the middle mouse button. Let's see, I don't really like that color for the blade, so let's go ahead and just make that the hilt color. Um, now there's usually the much easier ways to do this, but I'm just doing this. Like you can just select by color, increase the size of your brush, and then do that, but anyway. Let's go ahead and make you, we'll just make you a very bright, very bright blade. Again, there are other ways to do this by just like going to a different layer using the magic wand to select to select inside the outline and then color from there much faster. But okay, so that's it for our base colors. And if you notice, it kind of looks like crap. Um, so because the main reason for that is because sprites really get their uh, their detail, like what they when they look really good from their shading and stuff like that. Um, the first thing, I like to make th specifically three layers for shading. I use details, shading, light shading. And what I do is I change the opacity of these three layers. So details, I'll go to uh, 60. Shading, I'll go to 40. And light shading, I'll go to 20. Now, some people like, for like particularly shiny objects, they'll also add a highlights layer. Um, I like to set that to 50 if I ever do use it. It's pretty rare that I use it, though. All right, so you're going to want to switch your brush back to, or your pencil back to black. Um, for that being, like, say, if I want to make a detail, like, say, this needs to have... I'm holding down uh, shift to make the line. If you want the lines to be super straight, what you can do is uh, see it's a line sort of free motion here, um, which is not really showing up on the video capture because the computer's kind of rough. But um, if you hold down shift and control, it'll force the lines to be as straight as possible. Anyway, that being said, all right. Um, so as far as details go, let's put another couple of things right here. Um, details are basically what you want to use for, say, grooves in, in the surface or, uh, you know, carvings and lines, um, stuff like that, which you're not going to be able to get too crazy with because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a 20, 25 by 25 sprite. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put one more down here. Make it look like there's like a grip or something like that. All right, so that's it for details. Uh, you don't do a whole lot there. Now shading. Uh, now I'm going to tell you shading is one of those things where you want to shade a lot. Uh, the original unshaded color of your sprite should be like the minority. Like you shouldn't see that too much. And I like to go just directly over the details, just to dark on them up some. Again, I'm just trying to make this as quick as possible. Now, there are more scientific methods to be able to do this. Uh, I used to use a lot of them, but anymore, you know, laziness has kind of prevailed. Uh, I want to make sure I don't color outside of the lines wherever I'm shading for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to background, and I'm going to use U to switch over to the magic wand. It's also right up here. And I'm going to click inside of the outline, because it, it doesn't see the color, it doesn't see the shading. All On that particular layer, when I have that layer selected, all it sees is just the outline. So it's sort of like picking regions, um, sort of like a fill tool, kind of like that, if you don't understand how a fill tool works, like the little bucket. Um, so I'm going to select inside of there, switch back over this. Um, I don't want to put a shade on the tip because it's probably going to, that's probably where I'm going to show my highlight, which isn't going to show all that well because it's a really light color, but I digress. Let's go and say that's all nice and shaded there. Shade part of the way up. Okay, let's get to our light shading. Light shading is going to be basically the same thing, um, only now I really, you really don't want to go over your dark shading because it darkens it up like that. 
Um, it's up to you, but you could basically just say change both. A lot of people like to do this, and I, I don't blame them. I guess is uh, they change both their light shading and their heavy shading to uh, 20. That way they can just sort of go over them like this, and then they didn't accidentally darken things up more than they had to. Uh, again, you know, there's much better ways to do all of this, and I am just sort of cutting corners. Um, yeah, that's too much shading. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you, you get the point. Um, that It's a little bit too much, but that's kind of what it'll look like. If you want to deselect everything, go up to select none. Okay, so there's our basic sword. Um, it could look better, but again, I did it really fast. Highlights is one of those things where it looks, it works just like shading, except for you switch your brush to white. So say if I wanted a big sheen right here, I would just put that right there. If I wanted the tip to shine, um, I can go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, there you go. Not nothing too exciting there. I'm not a big fan of highlights. Uh, they look okay, but I um, mean, also another thing that I kind of want to point out is a lot of people do not like using pure black for their outline. Uh, the reason for that is it kind of makes it look really rigid and hard. Uh, what I can do is use my select by color, select that, switch back over my pencil, where's the size? Bam, there. No, yeah, I like it a little bit darker. Hang on. Bam. Uh, it'll hide a little bit. Alright, select none. There we go. We've got our, our thing. So you'll want to go ahead and save this to another layer. So let's go ahead and save as. Um, yeah, documents. I don't care. Um, test Word. Word icon. So what it's going to do is it's going to save this as a GIMP file. So you're not going to be able to use this in an RPG Maker right away. So, we'll, But you want to save this for uh, just in case you want to change something later. So, like, say if I didn't like uh, the color of this hilt. What I could do is select the colors tab, select by color, select that, switch back over to my pencil, uh, change the color I do want it to be. Let's say if I want it to be blue. Bam, it's blue. And none. Bam, now I have a blue one. So you can actually, this is a really good way to make variants on stuff. So say if you wanted like a golden gun, you could change uh, the colors layer to be gold. If you wanted the silver gun, you could change the uh, colors layer to be silver. Stuff like that. So it's really, really easy. It's really not bad at all. Um, and let's go ahead and say blue. So it's a really easy way to get a lot of mileage out of your uh, art time. Next thing we're going to do is go down to export to, um, save as, I think will help you do this as well, but anyway, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and save this into the desktop, it's a different place, I'm going to just delete it later. Uh, test sword icon blue. Export. Export. Okay. Alright, so, you can do this a couple of different ways, but what I like to do is, uh, well you can, you can open up the one you just saved, so, because this is the GIMP file that we have open. Uh, the thing, you can open up the PNG file, like it's right here, the one you just saved. And GIMP is kind of, and GIMP is kind of funky about this. Uh, what it'll do, so the PNG, yeah, here it is, is if you open an icon, <laughs> or open up an image, it won't open it up on top, it opens it up on, on the bottom, below the one you're currently working on. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Uh, control A, Control... X, Ooh, I guess I need to select first control X, there we go. Alright, so I've already got my icon sheet open. Uh, basically, if you want to use your icon sheet, here's a taco I made yesterday. Um, here's your icon sheet. Uh, it's what you use for like item icons, weapon icons, status effects, stuff like that. Basically, any icon you use in the game, small icon. Um, one of the things you're going to want to do is these are 24 by 24. So, you're going to want to view show grid and you want your grid to show 24 by 24 in order to change that you go to edit preferences default grid I made mine red and spacing uh, 24 24 okay um, you may need to restart GIMP for that to take effect I've seen it where GIMP won't change anything about the grid unless you change it and then completely restart it so all right so I've got my 24 by 24 I've got a nice empty spot over here I'm gonna use the selection tool the square selection tool or rectangle selection tool up here in the corner 
I'm going to go ahead and select the region that I want to put this bad boy in. And control V. And then hit the anchor to uh, anchor the layer down. And there you go. There's an icon you can use for whatever you want. Um, obviously RPG Maker already has plenty of sword icons, so I don't really need to worry about this particular, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, here's some really rough guns that I made the other day. Um, yeah, so it could be made, and I've been using those in games, in game for a while. And, uh, really, it's, it's really simple. It's time-consuming to learn at first, but once you've got it down, it, it's, it's really easy, so. Uh, sorry this is so long. Uh, thanks for watching.